Welcome to Professor Pincushion. In this tutorial, I'm going to give you some tips and tricks to working with satin and taffeta. Both of these are lovely fabrics used in a lot of special occasion garments. When you purchase, be sure to check the fabric information tag for the fabric content and care guide. These fabrics can be washable or dry clean only, so it's important to know which one you have. After you purchase it, the best way to store these fabrics is by lightly rolling it instead of folding it. Let's go over cutting out our pattern pieces out of our fabric. So here's my satin and I folded it in half so the right side of the satin is on the inside and the wrong side is out. Now you'll see here I have these folds and these creases. This fabric came from a stash that's over 10 years old. So this is what happens if you fold your fabric. You start getting these indentations that are pretty impossible to get out. So that's why it's very important to store your fabric properly. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your pattern pieces and if your pattern directions has a layout for fabric with nap, you're going to follow that layout because even though this fabric doesn't have a texture like corduroy and velvet, it can still look like a different shade if you switch up the direction of your pattern pieces. So if I have this going this way on the fold and the grain line is supposed to go this way and then I take this pattern piece and I lay it like this, it could end up being a problem once you sew, sew the garment together. So that's why you still want to follow the same rules as you would if you're using fabric with nap. Needle wise I'm going to use fine straight pins and these are actually pleating pins. You can use silk pins as well. But you shouldn't use ballpoint pins and I'm actually going to be pinning parallel to the edge of my pattern piece and I'm getting as close to the edge as possible. I want to stay inside where my seam line is going to be. So if my seam line is going to be 5 8 I'm going to be on the inside of that 5 8 line because this will put a hole in your fabric and we don't want to see it once our garment is complete. So if it's inside the seam line, you're not going to notice it as much. So I would pin all the way around. Now if you find that your fabric is really slippery and it's moving around a lot and you're having trouble doing it straight, underneath your fabric lay out tissue paper, pin the fabric to the tissue paper first, then do your pattern pieces and then you cut everything out together. So the tissue paper will definitely help in stabilizing everything. Now for marking your fabric, do not use a fabric marker that you need water in order for it to disappear. If your fabric is dry clean only and you start putting water on here to get rid of your fabric markers, you're going to end up with water stains that you're not going to be able to remove. So that's going to be a problem if you go ahead and you make your whole thing and all of a sudden you have water stains. So I just use a regular chalk and I press very lightly in order to get my mark. Make that a little darker. So that shows up pretty well and I'm using a contrasting chalk piece to make it show up better. The one frustrating aspect about working with these kind of fabrics is they do tend to fray a lot. So they may start off all nice and clean and then they start getting more and more like this around the raw edge. So for your pieces, a good idea before you even start sewing is to take them all and finish the raw edge. So I did an overcast here. If you have a serger, you can serge it or you can do a zigzag stitch on your sewing machine. Now of course, these are going to either be sewn into a seam or they're going to be hemmed. So you're not going to actually see this on the outside of your dress. Now the nice thing about it is once you sew your seam, if I was going to sew these two pieces together, so now this is a seam, your raw edges to your seam are already finished. So it's a little bit of time ahead of time, but in the end it's going to save you a lot of headache because you'll have already finished seams and you won't have to worry about this type of fabric fraying all over the place. So we're going to pretend like I'm going to seam these two pieces together. You're going to lay them right side to right side. And just like we did before, you're going to use your fine straight pins. And when I pin them, I definitely want to make sure that I'm pinning as close to the edge as possible, making sure that my holes are not going into where my seam allowance is. Because again, I don't want to try to create any unnecessary holes if I can prevent it. For stitching your fabric, you're going to use a needle called a sharp. And the width is dependent, of course, on the weight of your fabric. So for me, I'm just doing an 80-12. 
I'm using just regular all-purpose thread. You can also use lingerie thread. You may have to tighten your, fat, your machine tension a little bit. Also, your stitch width should be a little bit smaller than normal. Mine is normally at a 2.5, so the width on this is going to be a 2.0. So I'm gonna go ahead and start stitching here. Now, of course, a common problem is your fabric will tend to pucker as you sew. And another, a good way to fix this is you can add tissue paper underneath your fabric. So that just helps it feed through a little bit more evenly as it goes under the foot. Another thing you can do is as you're you're not pulling it through, but you're gonna hold it from the back and I'm gonna hold it from the front and I'm just gonna keep it tight as it goes through. So just keep it as tight as you can and that will also help. To press your seams, make sure that you have your iron on the correct setting. It should be on a synthetic setting, not too hot. Because it's satin, most satin garments are meant to have a softer look. They're meant to drape more, so it is not important that you have a completely flat, precise seam. So it does, it could just be a little bit of a softer seam. You don't need to make sure it's completely flat is all I'm saying. Also, you need to make sure that your iron is dry. So it's not gonna be sputtering. There's no water coming out of it because again, we don't wanna have water spots. In order to prevent an impression of our seam appearing on the outside of our garment, a trick that you can do is you're going to place paper right underneath the seam. And you can see I have my seam wrong side facing up because I'm gonna press on the wrong side of my fabric. And so this paper will kind of help prevent that. I'm also going to use a pressing cloth to protect the fabric because we don't want it to lose its sheen. And then I'm going to just carefully press my seam. As far as interfacing is concerned, if your fabric is dry clean only, of course you need to use sew-in interfacing. You can't use the fusible. If you can wash your fabric, then you can also use the fusible interfacing. Here's a closer look of our seam. Now you can see since we went ahead and did our finishing around our pieces before we seamed it, now that I pressed it open, our seam is already finished, so it looks nice and neat and professional. And it may fray a little bit as you can see right there, but it's not gonna fray as much, so that's good. Flip it over to the right side. We could take a look at the seam again. It doesn't have any weird puckering. It looks nice and flat and smooth, so that's great. Next, we're gonna talk about the hem. You have a couple of different options you can do here. I'm just gonna turn this and fold this. Now, if you want a softer look, I'd probably recommend doing a hand blind hem. You can also do a rolled hem, which looks very nice, but you'll wanna check out our tutorial on doing the rolled hem on our website. For right now, I'm just gonna show you on how to do the blind hem. So I'm gonna start at the raw edge that I just folded up right behind it. So my knot is gonna be hidden right underneath there. You don't wanna get too close to the edge either or it might just rip through. And then I'm gonna grab a little bit of the fabric. You wanna make sure that you keep your stitches small because we don't want them to show that much on the right side. And then again, I'm gonna grab a little bit of that raw edge coming from behind and to in front, and then a little bit of the garment and then back and forth from the raw edge to the garment to the raw edge. So making sure that my stitches are small again, grabbing a little bit of my fabric here. and that'll give you a nice soft looking hem. So we hope you enjoyed our tips and tricks for working with satin and taffeta. And with these tricks, hopefully, your garment will come out as beautiful as the fabric itself. Make sure to check out our other videos and visit professorpincushion.com to view our complete library with well over 150 sewing video tutorials. New tutorials are released regularly, so make sure to subscribe to be notified of the next release. Thanks for watching.